Hi guys, hope you're all well. Um, I've had to take a little break, I haven't been too good, but I'm feeling much better now. Uh, and I'm back on track, my hands are great. So, today, um, the uh, quite a few videos ago, I made this. And this was made with a, um, a type of cane that the name escapes me, where you roll two colours together. Um, oh, what's it called? It's gone. Anyway, we made this cane, if you remember, and then we just made a veneer and we made this necklace. Um, I had quite a bit of scrap left over, so I did the same again, but I stretched it out. So this bottom half is the cane again. And this part here was like a hidden magic. I made the cane really thin, rolled it really thin, stacked them all up, squashed them and pushed a texture mat in. And you can see you get a beautiful uh, effect. I posted this on Facebook just to show what I'd made with the scraps and everybody was like, oh my God, that's really cool. How did you do that? So today we're going to make uh, a, a similar sort of necklace um, it's just backed with black um, and it's got a black seam running through of course guys use whatever colours you want I'm going to use some Cernit Metallic in silver and I've got some Sculpey Primo in black so all you need is two colours uh, again guys you can use whatever you like and I've got this texture mat here it's a Cernit one and this it the texture mat itself is called freestyle uh, and it's just um, a, a bunch of all different doodly type patterns I just thought it would look cool um, for this one I actually use this texture mat which is a Ludmilla Baculina one uh, unfortunately it's not made anymore so I didn't want to use that but that's how I got this pattern if you have this in your uh, arsenal um, and it's still annoying me that I can't remember the name of the cane what's it called anyway that's what we're making <laughs> we're just making a two uh, we're going to condition two colors make a stripe uh, a strip roll them up together to give us a spiral and then we're going to um, make a little block with it and squash it down and do a bit of hidden magic style with it uh, so I'll go and condition some of this um, and I'm going to condition it so that it's already in a strip uh, to make it easier and then we'll uh, take it from there so I'll go and get this conditioned guys and try and remember the name of the cane and I'll um, see you in a second okay guys I've got my silver, I've got my black uh, jelly roll I remembered what it was called uh, so I've just done these on a zero setting because uh, we're going to be reducing them so uh, and I'm just going to just trim this tatty edge off and trim that end and the same with the silver um, it should be about the same width uh, but I can stretch it off a little bit if it's uh, not uh, my silver is extremely fresh um, let's just trim that so it's the same size them scraps to one side I'm really simple guys I'm sure you've all done a jelly roll before but we're basically just going to place the silver onto the black like so I just trim that excess off get this picked up 
and then we're just going to roll it and I may have a little bit of excess on my edge with the silver but I'll trim that off in a second in fact I'm just going to trim some of that silver off I just did it at an angle can you see just so that I know uh, I've got black all the way around and it's as simple as that guys it's a very easy cane you know I'm not a a big cane person I'm just trimming a little bit of that edge off um, where a bit of silver was overhanging so there we've got our jelly roll and of course now we just need to reduce it and as I've said it's very warm in the UK at the minute well in my part of the UK um, so my clay is very very soft let me just get rid of that bit of silver I've got on my fingers um, So I just want to try and make sure that this stretches at the same pace as everything else. And once I've got it stretched a little bit, I'll roll because I just find that easier. And for the for what we're doing guys I'm not going to trim the ends up because it doesn't really matter uh, for what we are using and I'm just going to get this down and you can do as this as big or as small as you wish um, you know you could make a quite a big block if you wanted I'm not going to do that I'm now just going to divide this up into two inch pieces like so oh I maybe should have let that rest a bit better but I'm just going to stack them two by three just get that consolidated like so and then what I'm going to do is don't I look cute what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it this way so from corner to corner I'm just going to flatten that out, get my roller and I will grab some lolly sticks to help me with this bit now uh, maybe three or four two three four one two three four just pick that up and roll it back that way okay that's a four I think I'll take it down to a three take it as thin of a veneer as you like guys of course um, I don't want to make too much just because um, you know I'm just gonna make one pendant with this so um, it doesn't really matter to me it, that will be the thickness that I end up with so there we go I've just rolled that out now it's nice and smooth um, and I am now just going to let that rest cool down on my glass mat a little bit uh, before I put my impression in and before I start to shave the bits because 
as I've said it's quite uh, warm in here today um, and I don't want everything to be a bit of a sticky mess so I'll just let that sit while I have a coffee uh, and then we'll come back and do the impression the um, hidden magic bit so I'll see you in a min hi guys okay this has rested a little while I've got my uh, sheet I am going to put just a little bit of uh, talc on there just to make sure it doesn't stick especially with this weather being so warm so I've just put a little bit of talc on and I'm just brushing it over it guys I'm doing it off camera then I don't get talc everywhere uh, just a little bit not too much just making sure this is clean it was uh, it had been Doris fied had some fluff on okay so let's pop this on there and as usual guys I'm just going to get um, an acrylic block to help me and just press down with my acrylic block in fact I'll stand up to do it And we've got a lovely impression. Never used this. Uh, it's one of my newer ones, the texture mat, uh, and it's uh, lovely and deep. Right, and now all we're going to do is shave this off to reveal our pattern. I think I've gone a bit deep there but never mind it'll be fine and of course dependent on the texture you're using guys will be dependent on what kind of pattern you get like this has got a fair bit of open space in it so I will have quite a bit of black which is good for me I'm just glancing over the top I don't want to make a a big chunk out of it like I did with that one so just gliding over the top cutting away that pattern And just take your time guys like I say you know I've not got the best hands for doing this so I always just take my time and I come at it from a few different angles oh I went a bit deep again oh still it'll be fine for what we're doing and I can avoid that bit where I went too deep uh, I'm just going to use a circle cutter we've got some lovely little swirls there too <coughs> let's get some of these crumbs away just want to try and get this bit here this is quite a busy pattern like I say I just thought I'd try it because I haven't used this texture mat yet and of course you could just put marks in it guys you could just um, you know as you would a Makume Gane like a freestyle Makume Gane you don't have to use a texture stamp Let's take a tiny bit off that bit and this this is actually quite busy for me um, I 
think I would have preferred it not so busy. Let me just get rid of those bits. Where's my little brush? I'm just going to go over with my brush because I've just got a few little crumbs stuck. And I'll get a piece of paper and give it a good burnish. In fact, I think what I'll do first, guys, is I'll just get a couple of lolly sticks and roll it. Um, just to get that top flat again. I may need to go down. Yeah, I'll take it down to a two. just helps with the burnishing process if I can do that there we go okay let's give this a nice burnish and we're going to do what I usually do guys we're going to part bake um, we're going to part bake uh, the dome and then cover it with some black and I've decided on it's going to be similar to this but I think I'll do it offset and instead of cutting this piece out we're just going to have a textured piece sticking out let's see how that's looking run my finger over make sure there's no indentations or anything left and of course just doing this burnishing really helps to cut back on your sanding so there we go and as I've said this is really busy for me uh, I would prefer a less busy pattern um but we've got plenty to play with like if i pop it over here um i've got quite a lot of black and i'm going to use a circle cutter as well and what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep it off center and i'm going to do my circle inner circle first and i'm going to leave that in then it doesn't distort the hole when I put this one down like so let's get this edge piece up let's get my let me just give that a little burnish because the edges come up a little bit with the cutter just give it a smooth and we'll get this picked up hopefully not too distorted as I've said it's so warm in here today and I've turned my fan off because of the noise while filming come out let's get that little centerpiece out and I'm just going to pop this over my mold try and make sure my circles not too distorted I just pop that in if I pop that in I can just make sure that it's positioned well my circle's nice oh it's stretching out a little bit there okay get this pressed down now I don't think I've got any fingerprints on it 
and I'll just get a little tool and go around this edge a little bit to get that can you see I've just trapped a bit of clay with the cutter so I'm just pushing it back and then smoothing it because the tidier it goes in the tidier it'll come out and I seem to have a bit of a weird bulge there now just give that a smooth go in with my nail sometimes that's a bit better nope still got a weird bulge let's get my cutter just that little piece there isn't happy let's just smooth it and I'll roll my cutter around that's better it's just got rid of that weird bulge for me it still looks a bit funky but it'll it'll be fine I'll just go around the outside with my nail Make sure that edge is nice and clean. And there we go. So I'm going to pop this in the oven, part bake it. Um, probably 15, 20 minutes. Um, and then we'll come back and do our centerpiece for it. See you in a minute. Hi guys, while well, that's just in the oven, I just thought I'd prepare the back um, that we're going to put on and we're going to give ourselves a rim, but we're not going to do a centerpiece, we're just going to dome it when it comes through. So I just took all my scraps, mixed them up, came out with this lovely um, hematite black colour. I've just got one of my texture sheets and I'm just going to, uh, in fact, get my block. I'll just get my block, lightly press to get some texture, like so. And I'm just going to leave this sitting on the paper to leach a little bit because it's very sticky. Uh, and we'll come and put this on our pendant. Uh, when it's finished baking. See you in a sec. Hi guys, okay, so this is out the oven. I haven't done anything spectacular. I just run a file around that inside edge because there was a few little sharp bits on. Uh, but it's lovely and smooth, so um, I didn't need to do anything to it. And this is gonna be our backing. Now, I've got a trusty sponge. And I'm going to, I bought some new blades. Um, I bought these ones because they haven't got a sharp edge there. So hopefully I won't cut myself. Um, I'm just going to stick that in a bit of clay. So we need to pick this up. <clears throat> I'm going to use a spot of paper, then I don't get any marks on it. Uh, and I need to turn it over let's do it that way so I'm going to put a little bit of liquid clay in here uh, of course the clay is quite sticky guys but I'm not going to risk it on this with it being part baked I'm just going to put a little drizzle in and just smooth that around with my finger just to make sure that we've got good contact I'll just run a little bit around that edge and a little bit around that edge and I'll just clean my fingers 
Let me get a wet wipe. Oh, it's really warm, guys, so I'm not too sure how well this is going to go. Okay, let's get that picked up. Let's get this bit of paper moved. Oh. And what I'm going to do is just pop that on there and start pressing it up and through like so and once I know that's adhered really well to the back end I'm just going to start pressing it gently around that ring my finger underneath is going around this edge underneath I'm just gonna make sure that that's adhered nicely like that let's just pop it down I'm gonna take some of this excess off just to make it easier to handle what I'm going to do is if I can find it there it is I'm just going to put a little bit of magic mix on my finger just a tiny tiny drop into that circle I'm trying to hold this I'm just going to use my finger and warm the clay up and get that into it in fact I'll just use my knuckle I just want to get a nice dome through there like so so we've got a nice dome and I'll bring my sponge back now and I'm just gonna <coughs> pat this up to the edge gently gently Let's move that. Just getting it to gently curve up onto that edge. I'm just going to now bring it to this edge and using my little blade trying not to cut myself I'm just going to go around I'm just going to trim the excess off first I can tidy it up later probably wasn't the best idea I had after having sore hands somebody actually suggested in last time I did this uh, using um, some scissors to trim round um, which is a, a pretty good idea actually but I've managed it now so now I'm just going to get my blade flat with my piece and just trim that which is easier said than done if you're struggling with this technique guys try it flat first rather than using a domed piece it's much easier on a flat piece to do this clay is so soft there 
there we go get in there now I'll just trim this off and then I'll go back around with the sponge make sure it's nice and smooth and it just takes a bit of patience guys I said this to you before I kind of rushing because I'm aware of um, the time constraints really so I'm just going to go around with my sponge make sure that that's nicely pressed in fact I'll just use my finger just to make sure that that's smoothed on I can just see a few places where it isn't Let me clean this blade because it's got a bit sticky. Okay, last pass. I've said before guys you can um, if you've got any little bits that you've not caught you can easily sand uh, if you're concerned um, I'm quite happy with that I just need to make sure that those edges are nice and round Seems to have a bit of a divot there. We've got a great big blue bottle that's just joined us. I think that'll do for me guys um, I can catch the rest sand in I don't think I've got any little weird gaps or anything so I'll pop this back into bake on a scrap of paper uh, clean up a bit of course and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like and then we'll sand it a little bit just need to make sure that edges it could be that my circle got slightly distorted which is what's given me a couple of divots around the edge but I think it's going to be okay once it's had a little sand like I say it's bloody warm here today so my clay is very sticky right i'll go and pop this back in the oven to bake um we need to put a bale on the back um but i'll pop this in and i'll see you all in a sec hi guys okay we're all baked the back is extremely messy but we won't worry about it right what I'm, I'm going to sand on camera I will speed it up I use some of these pads if I'm not using my nail files 
um, you get four in a pack from Resinate but if you just google this brand um, you're probably going to be able to find them they're just a soft pad with a wet and dry sander on and they come micro fine super fine and fine uh, and I'm just going to start with the fine like I say guys I will speed this up and uh, I just aware that I've not sanded on video for a while so I thought I would um, so I'll speed it up guys I've done enough sanding I think uh, I'll just go and give it a polish with the polishing head from my Dremel just to bring this shine up uh, I'll see you in a second hi guys so there we go all polished up as I said I would have preferred a more uh, open pattern um, as opposed to this very tight pattern but it, I mean it looks really good because um, of course you get the mica shift effect as well by using a metallic and I love the um, matte texture in the middle so there it is and I would normally put this on a Buna card guys but I'm waiting for a delivery um, of the thicker stuff so I'll just pop it on this thin one uh, for now and I've decided to do it there so it's kind of off that way so there we go guys really simple uh, using a kind of hidden magic technique uh, and a, a funky pendant um, and I'll see you all in the next video thanks for watching bye